Hi, I'm Jared Merlin, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my 100th episode. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, you most likely have seen some of my videos here on my YouTube channel. Uh, you know what I look like, and you know what I sound like, but you really don't know much about me. So, this is my story. And once upon a time, my real name is Joe, and I was born in Malden, Massachusetts. I grew up with my younger brother, Michael, in Everett, Massachusetts. Our mother, Rose, she was a single parent. And our biological father, he was never around long enough to be considered a father to us. So it was just the three of us. Now, my mom raised my brother and I as best as she could, being a single parent, and I have no complaints whatsoever. Um, she means the world to me. She sacrificed so much for my brother and I and made sure we had everything that she could give us. And believe me, we had everything. Clothes, food, toys, you name it, we had it. Now... When I was 11 years old, I was struck by rock and roll. A rock and roll goddess by the name of Joan Jett. My rock idol, yes. Her number one song, I Love Rock and Roll. Uh, ever since then, I wanted to be Joan Jett. And when I was in high school, dressed like Joan Jett, looked like Joan Jett. I was the male Joan Jett. Um, when I was 13 years old, my mother remarried. Um, uh, she got married to Dick, my stepfather. And um, I bugged him for, for like a good year, maybe a little more than a year, about getting guitar lessons. I really wanted to play guitar like Joan Jett. And after bugging him over a year, he finally took me to have, you know, to get me guitar lessons. And he brought me to a guitar teacher, and I'm not sure quite sure how he found this guitar teacher. Um, my guitar teacher's name was Ed Antonelli. He had a studio in Medford, Massachusetts, and he taught me the basics, you know, um, the guitar strings, E-A-D-G-B-E. -E. And um, then after that, he started showing me chords. Now, you know, that's basically the kind of rock and roll Joan Jett's plays as rhythm guitar. So my first Joan Jett song that I learned with the chords was her song Fake Friends, which is from her 1983 album titled Album. But after that, my guitar teacher, he was trying to teach me to play lead guitar. And I really, I'm not a lead guitarist, but he was trying to push me in that way. He was trying to get me to play like Eddie Van Halen. I, I just wasn't having it. I really wasn't. So I wanted to play like Joan Jett. So I basically just quit and I taught myself the rest. I have an ear for music, so I pick up every chord from Joan Jett's albums. And I told you, I wanted to be Joan Jett. And I I followed everything of hers to the T. So now in my bedroom in our house in Saugus, we moved from Everett to Saugus um, at the end of 1982. Um, I used to blast my stereo when my, my parents would go out, my brother was out, so I had like the house to myself, and I, I would blast my stereo, you no know, Joan Jett, and plug my guitar into my small little powerful gorilla amplifier, and I'd have my own little concerts. I, <laughs> I had a microphone stand and everything too, so the only person that didn't really like that too much was my neighbor Paul. He didn't like it at all. He used to come banging on the door, yelling at me, and 
he even, you know, cornered my father and, you know, he, he's going to knock this off or I'm going to call the police. But I didn't care. I was a rock and roll star. Yeah. <laughs> I was never able to get my own band together. I played guitar with my best friend, Scott. And I even played guitar with my friend, John. But nothing ever came of it. We never really, you know, got bands together or, or played any place. Um, I even played with other friends I went to high school with, and they, they had bands, and I played with them. But, again, nothing ever came from it. So, And it didn't matter anyways because I couldn't sing to save my life. I could play guitar, but I just can't sing. Well, my friend John, uh, he had a job working as a busboy at a restaurant called the Roy's Restaurant. It was a seafood restaurant in Saugus. And um, that was my actually my first job. John got me a job being a busboy with him. And um, it only lasted a week. Uh, the boss, Bobby Lavoie, he was a real creep. I really didn't like him. And from there, I left and I went to go work as a busboy for IHOP, which was on Route 1 in Saugus. Um, that's also gone today, as is Lavoie's restaurant. But um, that's where I started, you know, working. I think I was like 16 years old. And uh, let's see. When I graduated high school, I ended up joining the workforce instead of going to college. I worked for Filene's Basement. Yep, retail. Yeah, I, I did that. After that, I got a dream job that I did not expect to get. I actually applied for a job at State Street Bank and Trust. It was a financial position. And um, I made good money there, and I had an awesome job. And I loved the people I worked with and the people I worked for. And um, I did that for a while. But then after that, I left State Street, and I went to go work for Blue Cross Blue Shield, Massachusetts. I changed careers. I went into the health insurance field, which was really good for me. And um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, I, I, you know, as much money as they made, I was only making like 11 plus dollars an hour, and I got like a 15 cent raise, and I'm just... I, I told myself, this, I can't do this. You know, the Blue Cross Blue Shield, they, they should be paying me more. And I ended up finding out from a friend that Network Health, which was a low insurance health insurance company in Medford, Massachusetts, and I actually interviewed with them, and they offered me more money. So I said, bye-bye to Blue Cross Blue Shield, and moved on. Then in June, uh, yeah, actually May of 2013, I left Massachusetts. And I left everything behind. I left my friends there, my families. I left my life behind. And I got into Lakeland, Florida in June of 2013. Now, the reason I did that, I my father's health was not good at the time. Um, my mother and father both retired to Florida in 2002. So my dad, um, like I said, his health really wasn't that great. He had PAD in both of his lower legs. And only half of his heart was was functioning the other half was completely 100 percent blocked um that was so bad that they had to put a defibrillator in him which kept him alive and unfortunately my dad ended up with dementia and all the blockages he had just it ended his life in october of 2015. so one of the many reasons i moved here was not only to spend what time i had left with my dad but to also make sure my mother's my mother wasn't alone when that happened. And so also I didn't want her to lose her home and have to leave Florida. So I, I had no regrets. You know, my mom has always been taking care of people all our lives, you know, be it her parents, us kids, anybody in the family. So, you know, it was it was my turn to take care of her to because she she sacrificed everything for my brother and I. I, I felt I needed to do the same for her. I mean, I love her. She's my best friend. And so, here we are today. I started my YouTube channel in 2010, but I had no real content on it. Um, I had like a, my a video of me playing guitar and my nephews playing bongo drums, but that was it. I just wanted to have a YouTube page. I just wanted to be on YouTube. Then... I don't know what happened, but something in October 2012, I created my 
first YouTube channel. It was titled Beyond Me. I have psychic abilities. I also read tarot cards. And I was making videos about death, dying, God, angels, and the other side, along with my tarot cards and psychic stuff, but no one was interested. So I scrapped that channel and ta-da! You're on my second YouTube channel, and even I like the way this channel turned out. It was better than my first one. Much better. So this being my 100th episode, I wanted to share my life with all of you, um, show you where I came from, where I've been, and where I ended up. I am very grateful to all of you for liking my videos, leaving comments, and subscribing to my channel. It, it means a lot to me. It really does. So here's to 100 more episodes to come in the next few months. So who knows what I'll do for the 200th episode, but stay tuned. My prom date, my friend. Yes, I ended up going to my high school prom with my friend, Cindy. And, um, uh, we basically, we had a, a bunch of friends that we hung around with, and she was friends with my friends, Beth, and, um, we didn't have anybody to go to the prom with. Every, every one of our friends was going to the prom. They had a date and stuff like that, but Cindy and I didn't, and we were just going to go by ourselves, you know, go stag, but we just decided, you know, why not? So we did. And, um, she wore a pink dress, and I, because she wore a pink dress, I got her the pink corsage. To match her dress but i also got my tuxedo which was the pink tie and the pink bun. and I, I was really worried that i was going to stick out in my class wearing pink you know and i was going to catch hell for it all night long but there were guys dressed in pink t you know pink shirts i'm sorry dress shirts and pink ties and what have you so i wasn't really that out of place i was happy so, but um, before we went to the prom, I, I had a friend, Katie, of mine, who also didn't have a date for the prom, and she actually asked me, and I told her, I said, you know, I'm going, going with my friend Cindy, and come to find out, you know, a friend of ours told us that she was really upset with me. I knew she was upset with me, but said that um, she liked me, and I didn't feel that same way about Katie, and I really, you know, I, I was sorry, I, you know, but... I had already asked Cindy. I wasn't going to turn around to Cindy, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm going to go with Katie. And plus, I, I I had nothing against Katie, but I would have rather have gone with my friend Cindy anyways, because Cindy and I really knew each other. We got along, and, you know, I'm not to say Katie was a bad person, but it's just her and I didn't click like Cindy and I clicked. So, but the other thing that happened, though, too, is we had a wonderful time at the prom. It was just sensational. And... At the end of the night, I didn't kiss her goodbye because she actually, I didn't have a driver's license at the time or a car. She did. She drove us there and back. So she dropped me off at the house and I didn't kiss her goodnight. And I guess she was looking for that. But we were friends. That's that's what I thought, you know. And then her friend that went with us, uh, I didn't like her. She's a witch. But, um, you know, she calls me in the next day, you know, you, you know, Cindy was, hope, you should have kissed Cindy goodnight, but you didn't, and she's very upset, and, you know, mind your damn business. So, I ended up talking to Cindy, and I had to tell her the truth, I had to let her know, you know, I, I don't think of you that way, I don't feel that way, and this is why I'm gay. So, but, I mean, we, we stayed friends, it just, it didn't work out, but we stayed friends, we had a good time, and it was really, you know, memorable. I enjoyed myself. And I hope Cindy's doing well today. I, I lost touch with her, so I don't know if she found someone. And I am kind of curious as to how, how, you know, what she's doing today. Because if you're watching this video, hey, Cindy. But, um, yeah, that, that was my prom, my date. Oh, my God. You know, my family, <laughs> they just, I don't know where their brains were. Um, I had a, a cousin, Patty, that I used to be really close with. Um, but she is my stepfather's brother's daughter. She's not even blood related, but we're cousins by marriage because my stepfather married my mom. And her dad was my stepdad's older brother. 
So we were cousins, but my cousin Patty and I, we did everything together. We went places, we went shopping, we hung out at her house and this, that, and the other thing. And um, we went to my Aunt Carol, my Aunt Carol and Uncle Nick renew, renewed their vows one time. And my Aunt Carol was under the assumption that Patty and I were an item. And I told my aunt, she's like, Auntie, you, you know I'm gay, right? Oh, you're still doing that? It, wasn't that a, like a fad or something like that? No. And um, that actually wasn't <laughs> the funniest thing that happened. As my sister, Debbie. That's right, Debbie. <laughs> this is you. So my sister, Debbie, actually, because my cousin Patty had a bed in her room. And her TV was like right in the corner. Now, Patty had what's called the Sega channel. It's um, Sega was video games and stuff like that. And, you know, we played video games all the time. Well, was, was she able, we, she, we had the Sega system, but she ended up getting the Sega channel. And the Sega channel had way more games on it. So we always sat near the edge of her bed where the TV was. And I broke the corner of the bed, the wheel underneath and stuff like that. So the bed was like down. And um, it was an accident, obviously, but... My sister Debbie, being my sister Debbie, she's like, I knew it. I knew they were doing it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Deb. Yeah. So that was the funniest part about it. Is everybody thought my cousin Patty and I were a thing, and we weren't. We <laughs> so far away. Oh, my. You know, I always assumed I was the only gay one in my family. Um, none of my cousins were. None of my aunts and uncles were. I, I was really the only one. And then um, all of a sudden, my brother and his wife separated. He came to live with us back at our house in Saugus. And the parents were out one day, and he comes home. He was acting all kinds of weird. He kept coming into my room like he wanted to talk to me about something, then he'd leave. You know, an hour or two later, he come back in again. And it looked like he wanted to say something to me. He wanted to tell me something. I'm like, what? And he knocked and he left. Third time, he came back in the room. He threw these gay magazines on his bed. And he's like, I'm gay. I was in shock. I wasn't even looking at him. I was looking at the magazines on his bed. I was in shock. I, I, my brother went out with his girlfriend Rachel for the longest time. They were engaged, then they, they weren't. Then my brother got married to his ex wife Christine. They had two kids. Well, they didn't have the kids at the time when this happened, but I'm just saying, it's just I, I didn't know my brother was gay. <laughs> Nobody knew. We all thought he was straight. And I, I never forgot that. After he told me to, I hugged him, and then I started laughing. Like, you've I said the F word, the, you know, the not so nice word that I want you to say. So <laughs> that, that was unexpected. I mean, one, for one sibling, one brother to be gay, you don't expect the other one to be. So. Okay, now, every gay boy, I want to say, has crushes or guys they like looking at. <laughs> and the people that I really enjoyed in my teenage years, first off was Mr. Doug Flutie. He used to play for the, um, the New England Patriots. And trust me, I have other pictures of him. <laughs> but I, I like this one the best. Um, I'm not a sports fanatic at all, and I did not watch any of the New England Patriots games, even though he was a New England Patriot. He was just nice to look at. Okay. Then there was the solo flex guy, Randy Potter. And uh, I got more pictures of him as well, but this one I liked, even though it's black and white. But um, I used to have a poster, and um, it was colored. He was wearing, like blue jeans and taking a shirt off and I have no idea what that poster is today but yeah I really enjoyed looking at Randy too and then of course what gay boy's life was not complete without Mr. Tom Cruise 
from the movie Risky Business. Come on, look at those thighs. Yeah, well, it didn't hurt that he was wearing his tidy whities either. <laughs> then, oh baby. Oh yeah, Mr. Rob Lowe. <sighs> this was a fun movie, Young Blood. And, um, whoo. And of course, no gay boy's life is complete without Glenn from A Nightmare on Elm Street. That's right. Mr. Johnny Depp himself. Look at those abs. Look at that little furry trail. So, yeah. If, if you're a gay boy, you had to like to at least one of these five guys. But yeah, those are my five guys. Uh, some of my favorite gay movies growing up, um, the very first one I ever saw was Longtime Companion with Dermot Mulroney, and this really wasn't a fun movie. This was more of a serious movie. It was about the times of uh, the gay community, guys getting HIV and AIDS, and you know the characters, you just you get to see them and like them and love them, and all of a sudden now they're dead and gone, and it's just watching them die and how they, you know, their loved ones watched them leave. It's just, it was heartbreaking in a serious movie, but it's it's just one of those movies. My very first one that I saw, and um, it just, like I said, serious. Another movie I liked was Trick. This one with Christian Campbell and Tori Spelling. Um, I liked this one. It was It was fun. You know, Christian Campbell's character was... You know, out, but not exactly, not knowing how to be himself. And then, of course, he run, runs into this guy who just completely is gay as they come. And, of course, the best the best friend, <laughs> I hate to use the word, the hag hag, Tori Spelling, her character is so, oh, my God, unbelievable. I loved her on 90210, and I loved her in this movie. And my other movie was... I love this one too. It had some serious tone to it, but it was really a funny one of all things. But just to watch them all as friends interact with each other, um, gay guys. <laughs> of course, my favorite ones, Alex Jason Alexander and John Glover, who actually played uh, Lionel Luther from the show Smallville. Uh, Jason Alexander, <laughs> the one part in this movie I absolutely just, it killed me just when he said it is just, you just want to see everybody's dick. I just died. I love Jason Alexander. And then, of course, Brokeback Mountain with J. Chenley Hall and Heath Ledger. Also had Anne Hathaway and Michelle Williams in it. And um, who who didn't like seeing their backsides? <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, my favorite of all the gay movies... Nathan Lane and Robin Williams, The Birdcage. I love this movie. I could watch this movie till the cows come home. I'll be watching this movie on the other side. Um, Nathan Lane's character really, even though I love Robin Williams, Nathan Lane really pulled me into this movie, and I just, oh my God, unbelievable. Okay, so that is my 100th episode. I hope you guys enjoyed all that. Um, I really had fun making this video, and I'm glad that I saved this for the 100th video. And um, if you guys do like this, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, and um, I will catch you guys on the flip side.